To mentally prepare, I'm thinking about the previous season and what I've learned uh, and kind of just focusing on the highlights so that I boost my confidence and I'm also trying really hard not to think about the other goalies that will be there as well and just focus on me. Before they get on the ice, they should be doing a quick two to three minute jog, some body weight exercises like squats, lunges, donkey kicks to make sure that all their muscles are firing properly so they get the most power in their movements. Um, after that, they should be doing some dynamic stretches and uh, static stretches. A lot of goalies do hand-eye coordination drills once they get their lower body equipment on. That's pretty helpful to get in the right um, mental headspace right before they get on the ice. I actually would skate those first few laps, not too hard, but just to warm up and I wouldn't, I'd just be talking to myself <laughs> uh, to focus on me and I would take the time like I said, to probably keep visualizing a little bit and um, get my head in the zone. For the younger levels, I want to see the goalies be able to do five key elements of goaltending. So that's uh, their positioning relative to the ring, so keeping their belly button square to the ring, the positioning of their stick, make sure it's on the ice at all times, uh, to engage their arms when they need to to stop a shot, to go down butterfly because you need to take away the bottom of the, the net, that's where most of the shots go. The last thing is focus, the ability to get set, get in the ready position when the ring comes across the blue line and stay in that position and move with the ring. U16s and U19 goalies, what we're looking for is technique. So that's butterfly slides, butterfly uh, pushes, T pushes, shuffles, etc. Uh, we're also looking for positioning, that's positioning of the body keeping the belly button square to the ring, uh, positioning of the stick, and also depth, adjusting to the, to the threat. Uh, so that's depth in the crease. Uh, we're also looking for athleticism. That's very important. The ability to, to respond quickly to, to threats and, and explode laterally uh, across the crease. And also, we want goalies who want to be there. We want goalies who, who care. They get on the ice, they want to work hard. They want to demonstrate to their teammates and to themselves, their parents, the assessors, that they belong on that team. So when we're looking for technique, we're looking at two different groups. The first group is tee pushes and shuffles. For that, we're looking for the goalie to be square to the ring and always have their angles right. So we're looking at um, shoulders um, and hips. Their feet should always be parallel to one another, so they shouldn't ever be leading with their hip. Otherwise, they'll be off angle. Um, always keep your stick covering five hole. Also make sure you have force when you're covering five hole because I've seen too many goalies have rings just hit the stick and go right in. So always make sure you have force. The second group is power slides and butterfly slides. So for that, we're looking for power. Um, to do that, we're always looking for a bend in the knees and not at the hips. So then that way you're getting as much coverage from the top half of your body, as well as getting the most power in each of your movements by loading up your leg and being able to push. Also looking for the stick to be covering five hole there. Just making sure it's not ramping too much because otherwise the ring's gonna go right over the shoulder. And arms should always be in front of the body and covering the holes in between the torso and the arms. We're looking for goalies to not overslide or overcommit. That helps in two ways. First is if they overslide and the shot hasn't been taken, then the net's wide open. So if you don't overslide, you'll be able to have a better chance to stop the ring. But also if you've stopped the shot but you've overslid, then that hurts your ability to make the second or the third save. So it's important to make sure that you're not sliding out of the crease and you're stopping yourself. Realistically, you're putting so much power into your lateral movements that you will need to stop yourself. So we're looking for goalies to be able to make that powerful movement, stop themselves and be able to reset for the next one. I wanna be making smart plays and looking for that open player. And with that definitely comes communication too. Calling for the pass or, or like saying a girl's name if I want to give her the ring. If there's an opportunity, I would try and talk to my defense before and maybe go with a breakout that most people would be familiar with, like the flare or power right or left, because most girls should know what that breakout is. 
Um, but if I don't get that chance, I think it would be a good time to show those communication skills because then you can look for the open player and, and talk and you don't even need to know their name. You could just say like low if you want to drop behind the net or um, yeah, just talking and hopefully your defense are also open to communicating as well. We're looking for goalies to be able to throw to a variety of different places on the ice. We want to be able to see that goalies can throw high, can throw low, can throw across the body to the other side. Um, this isn't always an option because at the end of the day we want to see successful ring tosses. So if the only spots available are low, then throw low. But if it's possible, throw to other places on the ice. Make sure that the ring is not bouncing when it hits the ice. You just want it to be a seamless hit so then the player can skate onto it. Roughly three to five feet in front of the player is best so they have an easy time to get it. I would say the fakes are a really good and effective technique for ring throwing and I think goalies often forget that they can do that. So I would definitely try to incorporate some fakes just to show that you know what to do if your whole team is covered. So there's three areas or three levels of game sense. There's reacting, anticipating, and influencing. At the younger levels and the regional skill levels, we're looking more for reacting. Um, anticipating is more for the older levels and um, competitive skill levels. That's more where you're able to read where shots could be coming from and you're not always reacting as they come to you. So for instance, as the ring's being cycled through, you're able to identify the lanes in your own uh, triangle to be able to identify the potential areas where you're either gonna get the shot or where the ring carrier could make a pass down low, for instance, and take a shot there. So really, we're not looking for anyone to be too surprised. Anticipating you should be able to read what's happening and you won't look too frazzled when you're making the save. Influencing. We're not looking for goalies at U19AA, for instance, to be completely in the influencing stage. We're looking more for in the middle of anticipating and influencing. Influencing can be as simple as um, you're moving your stick in the way uh, when the ring carrier is going behind the net so they can't make the pass in front of the crease. It could also be you're controlling your rebounds really well so you know that there's players right in front of the net that could pick up the ring if you let out a rebound so you're able to control it and keep it in the crease to be able to distribute it to your own defense. So the most effective goalies are the ones that make goaltending look easy and effortless. They're the ones that are taking the shots square in the chest or taking the shots right in the pads. Uh, they're not moving frantically, flopping around the crease, diving uh, for rings. Sometimes that does happen because the opposition always is trying to score and, and they, they will challenge the goalie and, and get her moving laterally. Uh, but the best goalies are the ones that make it look easy and make it look boring. You can't dwell on, on previous mistakes. Um, you shouldn't do that in a game either, but in tryouts it's really important to just put whatever happened behind you um, because everyone makes mistakes, but you kind of need to remember that like the evaluators know that and they're looking for how you're going to react after the fact. So what I personally do is throughout the whole scrimmage, I just tell myself the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. That's a pretty common thing, I think, to help keep that like positivity up and you don't get down on yourself. It's really important that the goalie is able to reset. Um, the way I do it is there's like 10 seconds between the goal going in and the play starting again. So I usually think of how the goal went in, how I can improve the next time, and then I get a sip of water and the game's about to start anyways. So parents and goalies need to understand that the goalie position is the loneliest position on the ice and there's no place to hide. When the ring goes, when the opposition scores, everyone focuses in that moment right on that goalie. And, you know, we don't have a horn going off and a light flashing, but we do have the parents and the parents on the opposition team and certainly the players jumping up and down, cheering. And that can be really disheartening for goalies. So the goalies have to understand, they have to get past that. They have to learn from their mistake, the mistake they made in the moment. And maybe it wasn't a mistake, maybe it was just a good shot, because that happens. But when a goalie can mentally get past that, can mentally learn instantly from that, have a brain break, take a drink of water, get refocused, get back into the play, 
then they become a better goalie. I think my favorite one was in U16. I went from U16B to U16AA, and for that tryout, I was listening to Lose Yourself um, by Eminem. <laughs> that was my song. So whenever, my mom was driving me to trials, so when we drive to trials, I'd listen to it then, and then while I was getting ready, I would do my um, hand-eye coordination drill and listen to it then as well. Pump It by the Black Eyed Peas really gets me going. <laughs> it's a good pump up song and it's uh, it's fun for like the team to listen to too if someone has a speaker. <laughs> Goalies have the ability to steal games. Goalie making a great save has the ability to lift her teammates just as much as a player does when she scores. So it's really important for goalies at whatever age to start to develop and continue to develop that, that mental toughness, that ability to play and forget in the moment, but learn from your mistakes. There's only two spots on that team and you know, it's like it's really hard to control who's going to be selected for that. So I think for me personally to cope, um, in the past I've actually reached out to the evaluators and I've actually asked for some feedback if they were willing to provide it. And that has been really helpful just for me to guide how I want to improve. And then, you know, next season, I know what I need to work on. Um, but also, it, you just have to remember that, like, you tried your best, that's all you can do. And, and you're going to have a fun year no matter what, playing ringette, so. <laughs> Intensity, athleticism, uh, positioning, that's body and stick positioning, and I forgot the other one. So the other thing about goaltending is that the goalie is 